Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for joining the call again. And uh, uh, we are waiting for your enlightening uh, class. And uh, we relished your uh, chanting uh, along with you last time. So it was wonderful. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for joining the call again. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji, over to you. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. And thank you, Maharaj, for joining. Thank you so much always for your wonderful association. Thank you for gracing us, Maharaj. So, devotees, we will go ahead and proceed. And uh, Maharaj will enlighten us on Canto 5, Chapter 22, from verse 1 through 7. Maharaj, whenever you're ready, you may take the call of Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So let's go to the translation. <laughs> the chap what is the name of the chapter? Movements of the Sun, is that what it's called? Orbits of the planets, okay. Orbits of the planet, so we're getting very scientifically and with a lot of technicalities connected with the scientific. It may seem a little hard to understand this because it's something that is something that we have not been exposed to in our day-to-day uh, -day life with modern science. Well, this is actually real science here. So translation king parikshit inquired from sukadev goswami now he's beginning a new topic <clears throat> my dear lord you have already affirmed that truth the truth that the supremely powerful sun god travels around Dhruvaloka with both Dhruvaloka and mount sumera on his right yet at the same time the sun god faces the signs of the zodiac and keeps sumera and Dhruvaloka on his left, <clears throat> how can we reasonably accept that the sun god proceeds with Sumera and Juvaloka on both his left and right simultaneously? <coughs> Check text two. <coughs> Sukadeva Goswami clearly answers when a potter's wheel is moving and small ants located on the big wheel are moving with it. One can see that their motion is different from that of the wheel because they appear sometimes on one part of the wheel and sometimes on another. Similarly, the constellations and signs with Sumer and Druvaloka on the right move with the wheel of time and the ant-like sun and other planets move with them. The sun and planets, however, are seen in different signs and constellations at different times. This indicates that their motion is different from that of the zodiac and from the wheel of time, which explains why they're both left and right simultaneously, because it alternates depending on the speed of the zodiacs uh, in relationship to the speed of the sun. <laughs> okay, text three. The original cause of the cosmic manifestation is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Narayan. When great saintly persons, fully aware of the Vedic knowledge, offer prayers to the Supreme Person, he descends to this material world in the form of the, of the sun to benefit all the planets and purify fruitive activities. Now we get a little bit idea of what is the benefit of the sun. It benefits all planets, it gives heat, light, and at the same time purifies fruit of activities. He divided himself into 12 parts and created seasonal forms beginning with spring. In this way, he created the seasonal qualities such as heat, cold, and so on. So we're hearing about how creation goes on in the planetary systems with different qualities manifesting all coming from the Supreme Lord. Text four, try to stay fixed on what we're saying here because it's quite technical. And if you listen to it, you'll, quite, you'll be amazed to see what is being said. 
According to the systems of the four Varnas and four Ashrams, people generally worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Narayan, who is situated as the sun god. So here we go. So Narayan is also situated within the sun. That's why sometimes we see people worship the sun as the Supreme, because the Supreme Lord Narayan, along with Lakshmi, are both situated as Lakshmi Narayan within the sun. With great faith, they worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead as the super soul, according to ritualistic ceremonies handed down in the three Vedas. As the super soul is localized, so is the sun, such as Agnihotra and similar higher and lower fruit of activities. And according to the process of mystic yoga, in this way, they very easily attain the ultimate goal of life. So you hear, you see a particular type of worship is being done by a particular class of spiritualists who worship the sun god with Agihotra, various types of fruit of activities combined with the process of mystic yoga. Text six, five, or text five, yeah. The sun god who is Narayan or Vishnu, the soul of all the worlds, is situated in outer space between the upper and lower portions of the universe. Okay, so here we go. Situated in upper space, situated in outer space with, in between upper and lower portions of the universe. That means practically in the center. So to say the sun is in the center of the universe. Passing through 12 months of the wheel of time, the, con, the sun comes in touch with 12 different signs of the zodiac and assumes 12 different names according to those signs. The aggregate of these 12 months is called a samvatsara or an entire year. So an entire year, when the sun goes through the different signs of the zodiac, of the different planetary places within the universe it is called the Sambhatara, which takes. Now, here, we're going to get to something technical. According to lunar calculations, two fourth nights, one of the waxing and the other the waning, form one month. That same period is one day and night for the planet Pitriloka. According to stellar constella calculations, a month equals two and one quarter constellation. So we're seeing the relationship between solar and lunar. When the sun travels for two months, a season passes. And therefore the seasonal changes are considered parts of the body of the year. So we know in the Western countries, we have four seasons. In India and in Asia, they have six seasons. So here it's mentioned two months for each season. According to stellar or the stars as they move through the different constellations. X6, you have to understand one thing, everything is always moving. <laughs> so nothing is stable. The sun is moving, the earth is moving, planets are moving. Everything is moving. Thus, the time the sun takes to rotate through half of outer space is called the ayana, or its period of movement in the north or in the south. So when it does twice, that's a full year. Okay. Okay, so text seven, the sun, God has three speeds slow, fast, and moderate. So <clears throat> you might not be able to see it, but you, if you actually look, you'll see at different times the sun's speed is fast, slow, or in between. The time he takes to travel entirely around the sphere of heaven, earth, and space at these three speeds is referred to learned scholars by the five names, Samvatsara, Hari Vatsara, Ida Vatsara, Anu Vatsara, Anu Vatsara, and Vatsara. Srila Prabhupada's purport. According to solar astronomical calculations, 
Each year extends six days beyond the calendar year. And according to lunar calculations, each year is six days shorter. So there's a gap of 12 days. Therefore, because of the movement of the suns and the moon, there is a difference of 12 days between the solar and lunar years. So make a note of that. Solar lunar years are appearing longer and lunar years are shorter by 12 days. At the Samvatsara, Parivatsara, Adi Vatsara, Anu Vatsara, and Vatsara pass by. Two extra months are added within each five years. So here how, how the difference is made. This makes a six Vats, some Vatsara, because that some Vatsara is extra, the solar system is calculated according to the above five names. Leave that, uh, leave that uh, translation on purport on number seven. Don't change it. Vandey ham shi shi uta pada kamalam shi guru vaishnavam cha shi rupam sa guja tam sahagana thagana tam vitam tam sajivam sadvaitam sarvadutam parijana sahitam krishna chaitanya devam shri radha krishna padam sahagana lalita shri vishakam vitam cha Hey Krishna, Karuna Sindhu, Dina Bandhu, Jagatate, Gopesha, Gopika, Kanta Rafa, Kanta Namosta, Te Tapta Kanta Nagodangi, Radhe, Vrindavane, Swari, Vikabana, Sukhi Devi, Pranamami, Hari Priye, Panchakalva, Tarupa, Shakripa, Sindhu, Pevacha, Patita Anam, Pavane, Yo, Vaishnava, Yo, Namaha, Namaha. Sri Krishna, Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadada Resivasari Gaur Bhakti Vindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare. So uh, put the whole purport up, not just part of it. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Bring the whole purport up. Yeah, okay, there you go. Okay, so uh, so you see what is being said here that there is an extra two months that are ad added with every five years. And those months we also know as the month of Purushottam. Um, you'll see it'll come up, I think, this year. I think it's closer to every 27 months, one of them comes up. So 27 months is about 27, 27 is five years is 54. Maybe it's a little longer than 27 months. It must be 20 or 30 months, 30 months, 60, yeah, 65 years. So these, this, extra time period, you notice that in our Vaishnav calendar, there is a month called Purushottam Mas, and that's the extra month, and it comes up twice in every five years, or once in every two and a half years. This is called the Six Sambhatsara, and that way that balances out the, um, the lunar and solar differences in astrological movements. So um, according to um, astro astrology from the east, they go by the moon sign. Astrology by the west more or less gives emphasis on the sun sign. Both include both signs. So there is a different sense of calculation. But we say actually that what it goes on in the east is the origin because that is where Vedic knowledge originated from and then it spread western therefore there's been some adjustments by the western 
scientists, technologists, thinkers like that, for whatever reason. <laughs> These extra two months uh, is also a spiritual month. The month is called Purushottam Mas. And during that time, uh, many austerities are recommended during that month. It's called Krishna's month. As uh, Damodar, the month we experience every year during the Kartik time, is the month of Dhammaradatta's Radharani's month. And so the month that glorifies Krishna, the month is, is called Purushottam Mas. There's a wonderful story behind the um, appearance of Purushottam. It's very lengthy. Uh, I can't remember all the details, but um, Purushottam Mas was once seen as the most abominable of all months. And therefore, that month itself, because we understand each of the months are also a personality. So that month was really in distress because it was considered to be a useless, degraded, very inauspicious month. Um, the month was experiencing great anxiety. She came and fell at the feet of Lord Vishnu and said, this is my situation. Please give me your mercy. I'm not appreciated or liked by anyone. I am out. I don't see any purpose to my existence anymore. There's only one solution for my distress. I will end my existence. Lord Vishnu became very compassionate towards her and said, this is a concern for Lord Krishna. So both Vishnu and Krishna uh, I mean, Vishnu and the month of Purushottam. She was called Malamas. Mala means contaminated, diseased. Like that. So uh, she went with Vishnu. Vishnu took her to Vaikuntha, not Vaikuntha, but to Goloka Vrindavan. When she came, she noticed how the atmosphere was completely spiritual and everyone was happy there. Finally, Vishnu came to Krishna and said, this is the situation. And she was still in overwhelmed with emotion. Krishna said, why is she crying? <laughs> this, is, this is Vrindavan, this is the spiritual world. Nobody, is, nobody experiences distress here. Vishnu explained the situation. And then she came forward, fell at the feet of Krishna and begged for his mercy and was crying like, like she couldn't stop crying. <laughs> she was so much in distress, she felt her existence was useless, meaningless. No one really appreciated her. But Krishna did something, and he uh, took compassion on it, and he said, from now on, your month will be known as Purushottam Mas, and not Mala Mas anymore. Mas refers to month. And um, therefore, it'll be non-different from me. And anyone who performs devotional service in this month will achieve much more benefit than any other time. In fact, Purushottam Mas is considered 16 times more powerful than uh, the Kartik month, which we experience every year. So uh, it was given such acclaim and such glory by Krishna. And therefore, uh, <clears throat> the story goes on to say that the Pandavas were exiled to the forest, thrown out of their kingdom, harassed by the Odina in so many ways. So they were in the forest, the five Pandavas along with their communal wife, Draupati, and they had to undergo much austerity. While they were in the forest, Krishna came to see them. And uh, um, they fell at the feet of Krishna, actually, and it was Yudhisthira who said, you know, please tell us, Krishna, why are we suffering like this? 
And um, Krishna said, well, it's easy to understand. The month of Purushottam month has just passed and you failed to honor that month. And because you failed to honor that month properly, this is your reward or this is your punishment. You were forced to lose your kingdom. You were sent to the forest and you were, your wife Draupadi was harassed in so many ways. So this one, then they explain like that. So they asked, what can we do? So then of course, Krishna said, well, you have to perform austerity. And the next time Purushottam Mas comes, you must execute it with complete attention and complete uh, rules and regulations as given. And because they did that on the next cycle, cycle of Purushottam Mas, they came back and they were able to win the battle and retain their kingdom. So how important that month was. Of course, there is a beautiful story related to Draupadi. How Draupadi had to undergo so much suffering because in her previous life, she, uh, she was told by uh, Durvasa Muni in her previous life that this month of Purushottam Mas is very auspicious. She didn't believe him. She started to criticize him. And he became very angry with her criticism and cursed her that she would, uh, you know, let's see, she would, uh, she would never get a husband because she also was approaching Tarasa Muni for a husband. He said, you'll, and you'll have to suffer this life and the next life also. She prayed to Lord Shiva and Lord Shiva. She prayed to Lord Shiva and Lord Shiva took compassion on her and told her that if she follows the rules and regulations of Purushottam Mas, then she will be free from the reactions of the offense that she had committed against Durvasa Muni for criticizing him by, by saying that what he's telling her to do is not what she wants to do, it's all wrong, and that he's not qualified to give instructions. And because she did that, she was born in her next life as the daughter of Ju King Jupiter like that. But there was still some reaction left from her offense and therefore she was forced to take, to come to the forest along with the Pandavas because they had to suffer again for failing that month. So that month, which is mentioned here, is the most auspicious month. It should come up this year again. I'm not sure when, but I think it's due for another appearance. And so be very aware of how important this month is. You'll find that there's no holy days in that month. Everything stops. The calendar goes blank. And all there is is the two Akadasis, that's all. There are no appearances, disappearance days of sadhus. There are no festival days. There are no appearances of the Lord. And it comes, and then, and then it's, it stops the regular progression of the other months and appears in order to fill in this gap here, along with giving devotees a wonderful opportunity to make advancement by following Purushottam Mas. So this is what is being explained here. Now, what we have here in these seven verses is actually real scientific knowledge. This knowledge is coming from the Vedas itself. It's Srimad Bhagavatam is the essence of the Vedas. And so all of these, you can see how technical everything is. Obviously, it's not some speculation by some kind of scientist. This is coming right from the source itself, from the Supreme Personality of Godhead into the hearts of his pure devotees. And so this is the cosmic manifestation. You'll see Srila Prabhupada spoke many times in his lectures, and particularly his morning walks, discussing the cosmological arrangements, the movements of the sun, the movements of the moon, 
the various seasons, how they appeared, and uh, showing how the scientists are simply speculating using their imperfect instruments. We also know, we also hear that those in the material world, their senses are imperfect. And the four characteristics of imperfect senses are the, uh, they subject to illusion. They, uh, the senses are imperfect, they're subject to illusion. They make mistakes and they have a cheating propensity. With these deficiencies, you cannot get correct knowledge. And even if they make these microscopes, telescopes, and various types of instruments to enhance their seeing power, because these instruments are also made by imperfect senses, they are also imperfect also. In other words, they're not qualified to give the knowledge, even by a neutral observer. So when we take the knowledge coming from Vedas, especially the Srimad Bhagavatam, very scientific, uh, it's very interesting. And the temple of Vedic Planetarium, which is being built now, it's, it's due to open in two years, in the year 2024, is meant to It's meant to show um, what is the actual arrangement of the universal structure, how the planets are situated in different uh, spheres according to their movements. Uh, the devotees who are working on this have been doing this for the last 20 years, trying to put this all together for the benefit of the entire world. So this temple was called the Temple of Vedic, Planet, Vedic Planetarium is a map of the universe along with all of the movements within that universe. And they're going to have, they have a special theater next to the TOVP where they're going to be showing uh, films videos, documentaries on the structure of the universe and how it's, how it's actually set up, which is going to be a kick in the face of the scientists. Prabhupada said, I take my boot and I kick in their face. This, this Vedic planetarium is Prabhupada's kick on the face of the scientists because <laughs> they are simply speculating, their senses are imperfect, and therefore, whatever they say is always wrong. I'll give you an example. There is a thing called the mirror's effect. Uh, mirror's effect was a scientific theory that came up many years ago. It was also started by uh, 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 Albert Einstein. Einstein was correct when he said, but the, the scientists that took Einstein's theory, they added their own miscalculations. So what was the Einstein theory? The Einstein theory is that when you look up into the sky, using your telescopes and various types of instruments, you may see some constellations there. But well, what you see may be millions of miles from what from the where it appears to be, because life light refracts, and therefore what appears to be in one place is simply the reflection or refraction of the movement of the light and from different angles of vision, and therefore it's not where you see it. But the scientists didn't ex either didn't accept it or didn't know it. And they were making theories based on the positions of various types of cosmological structures, planets, movements. But then again, at one point, one brilliant science came up and said, it's all wrong <laughs> because what we see and where, we, where it is, it's not where it is. And what we see is not what we see. <laughs> 
So um, yeah, that's an example. So Prabhupada talks about that with his devotees, how every year they come up with new theories and throw out the previous year's theory. So what does that mean? That means they don't know. <laughs> They're just speculating. They want to be known as scientists and they present this knowledge to people in general and people get bewildered. And therefore, as it says, that the moon is 1,600,000 miles farther away from the earth than the sun. Prabhupada said we can accept the fact that the, the, the sun is 93 million miles away. He said we can accept that. But then again, we must also accept the fact that there is an additional 1.6 million miles farther away is the moon. Uh, so therefore Prabhupada gave the knowledge that is there in the Vedas and not simply someone's speculation. So today's science is more like science fiction. <laughs> they don't know what they're doing. Yeah, they, they're always changing, 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 changing. Just wait for the latest changes. Yes. Again, imperfect senses, imperfect instruments, cheating propensity makes mistakes subject to illusion. So this is, uh, so therefore we can, we can rightly say that what's in the Bhagavatam, now what's in the Bhagavatam, especially in this section of the fifth canto is a series of chapters. And this will be continue on for, the, for a few more chapters. You'll find it very interesting for those of, especially for those of you who have a scientific mind, what is being said and explained here. And you'll see that uh, um, it's so nicely arranged. And the, Vedic, the Temple of Vedic Planetarium is meant to show what is there in a very visual way. So people will understand that actually Krishna is the center of everything. This planet is the highest planet in existence beyond the material cosmological structure. The farthest planet away, at least from the scientific view, is Pluto. Pluto is a very dark planet, but Prabhupada also talks about Pluto in one of his lectures, and it's the residence of Yamaraj. So we know when people who live in the material world commit sinful life, when they die, they're taken to the abode of Yamaraj, which is a developed planetary, it's in, it's in the lower planetary systems, but it's still, uh, you know, it's the boat of uh, Yamaraj. There's so much knowledge that can be revealed here, and there are books being written about this, and there has been many already that has been written. Uh, it's very hard to understand unless you have a very uh, clear scientific mind, and you also have some knowledge of of uh, scientific jargon, the language that is used to explain everything. So Bhagavatam is the best in all categories, even, even cosmological uh, explanations of the, high, the planets and how everything works. With the sun being the center here, mentions the three speeds. So the sun doesn't just travel one speed. Uh, if you notice, you can probably see that in the morning, the sun travels very fast. When it comes up over the horizon, it moves very quickly through its different phases like that. So that, that's observable like that. Uh, and Prabhupada talked a lot, and not just a little about scientific knowledge, according to Bhagavatam, explaining 
how modern science is just kindergarten fantasy. That's pretty much what it is. <laughs> Okay, so I'll stop there. Thank you, Maharaj. What a wonderful class. Thanks very much for enlightening us. It was very soothing to the ears to hear about, again, the Purushottamas, about sun god, and making us aware, again, that everything here in this world is moving. It's very interesting if we don't think about it. One basic question, Maharaj, so is everything in this material world, we know that sun, moon, planets, they are moving. Also, the, the Goloka, is it like a static, do you know? Is it uh, the Vaikuntha planet, are they static or they have their own, uh, um, I don't know. Well, yeah. It doesn't say anything about the spiritual world, whether it's moving. Yeah. Or not. I've never read anything like that or heard of anything. But because creation is an element, a combination of matter, matter is always in flux. Even mm. the scientists got that one right. So flux means change, and change means movement. Right. But for the spiritual realm, uh, I don't think so, because there's no, there's no interaction of the material elements there. It's all spiritual energy. It may move and it may not move, but if it does move, it's by Krishna as well. Of course. Thank you, Maharaj. Um, devotees, you may unmute yourselves. You may switch your cameras on. And please go ahead. Do not hesitate to ask Maharaj any questions that you might have. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandavat Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you Maharaj, such a beautiful class. Uh, thank you so much for such a beautiful class Maharaj. And you are talking about Purushottam month. Uh, I really like this month so much because initially when I came into Krishna consciousness, uh, uh, who were guiding me, they told me that, you know, now it's Purushottam month, you are just coming to the program. Why don't you start chanting 16 rounds? So that moment they told like you just chant for this one month but happens so that after that I continued chanting my 16 rounds. So this month is very, very dear to me. Thank you so much Maharaj for talking about that. And I, I was recently hearing one lecture of uh, Guru Maharaj, His Holiness Jai Patak Swami Maharaj and he was saying how scientists is so... Um, so talented, they just say, you know, if others, other scientists come and say that this is wrong, that they have uh, discovered something new, and they say this word, tum bhi chup, hum bhi chup, means you be silent, I will be also silent. <laughs> Let a science win, you know, science should not fail. This is the strategy people use here. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for such a beautiful class. Very grateful to you, Hari Bol. Thank you, Mataji. We asked the devotees to turn on their cameras. Hare Krishna Maharaj Tanvat Pradam. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, my small clarification is when sun is moving at different places at in the morning, everywhere, wherever it goes. If in India, Europe, US, wherever, in the morning, the color is much brighter. The color is red. Whereas after two hours, the, that color is not there. So when the sun is moving, the, the front of a sun has that color? Or how does this happen? No, the sun doesn't change colors. It's just the atmosphere that you view the sun through is at a certain a certain way and you it appears in different colors that's all it's just like if you put on a pair of green glasses everything looks clean put on a pair of yellow glasses everything looks clean so Prabhupada talks about that it's like a kaleidoscope 
as the sun moves through the different atmospheric arrangements, it, the colors appear differently. That's all. But the yeah, sun is the you. same. The sun is always the same. Okay. Hare Krishna. Yeah, just like it says, it says that. Um, give you an example. Uh, it's an old saying. It's kind of a little thing. Uh, red sky at night, sailors delight. Red sky in morning, sailors. Uh, sailors. Uh, red sky at night, sailors delight. Red sky in morning, sailors morning. Something like. That. So red sky at night means the next day is going to be a nice day. A red sky in the morning means mm. it's going to rain. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Maharaj. Thanks. It's the atmosphere that, that makes the different colors. Sri yeah. Devi Mataji, you may go ahead with your question, please. Thank you, Nina. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to your divine lotus feet. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for this class and this uh, knowledge that is there in our scriptures. It's so important for us to learn and understand. I have a question regarding a period of the day known as Rahu Kalam. When I was a little girl growing up, my mother would consult the Panchang and she would say, no, no, now Rahu Kalam it's inauspicious time, we should not do travel, we should not do this, we should not, so many things like that she would say, but uh, we don't really pay so much attention to this Rahukal, this inauspicious period in the day as uh, Hare Krishna devotees. Would you comment on this? Well, you're going to be affected by the material, it depends on the, the level of your spiritual practice. Just for instance, Prabhupada taught us also that you shouldn't travel on Thursday. He said it's inauspicious. So when Prabhupada had to travel on Thursday, he would take his shoes on Wednesday night and put it outside his door in the direction that he was traveling, which indicated he was leaving on Wednesday. So there are omens, signs, auspicious, inauspicious things that come with different atmosphere, just like, yeah, the, uh, you don't cook during a, a solar, solar eclipse either. So yeah, things are, so we don't, we try to follow them, but if you're chanting Hare Krishna and you're fixed in Krishna consciousness, you may not be affected by this because these things are all material. But they are quite powerful from the material point of view. So yeah, just like they say, they shouldn't you shouldn't uh, travel on a codice also. And then I had a I had a feed. I just saw two different situations just recently. The myself, Somebody booked my ticket for a codice, and, and, and I didn't know about it. And I wound up traveling on the codice, and everything went wrong. <laughs> okay. uh, another devotee, I'm sure you know who he is, one of my your god brother, he did the same thing. When he was traveling on a codice, he missed his plane. <laughs> so, your codice is not a day for travel considered inauspicious, but sometimes we do it because we have to because of service. Therefore, one should take note of that and take extra sh shelter of the holy name. We don't stop our service because something is inauspicious. We just become aware of that, that's all. Maharaj, what did you say about Thursday, that Thursday one should not travel? Is it inauspicious yeah. or something? Yeah, probably said that. Okay. Especially between the hours of 4 and 6 p.m. He said that's the most inauspicious time. I see. 
Yeah, you know, I was tra I was traveling one time on Thursday between four and six, and our mm -hmm. car got a flat tire. So. <laughs> <laughs> And that is Ramkalam time, usually on Thursday is Guru Maharaj. That uh -huh. afternoon, the afternoon time is usually Rahukalam on Thursdays. Uh, what color? Uh, that time, that particular time in the afternoon is Rahukalam, Rahukal, inauspicious time. Four to six. Yeah, usually. Okay, well, that, that kind of, yeah. And Prabhupada, yeah, Prabhupada told us all these things. If you listen to Prabhupada's lecture, you'll get all this stuff. In the Krishna book, it says if you see a man walking with a pail full, it's auspicious. If you see a man carrying a, a pail that's empty, that's inauspicious. I mean, there's a whole science of omens, there's even books written about omens. Quivering of the 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 you know the left side of the cheek indicates something in, inauspicious is about to happen to you. It's all there. If you are really observant and really intelligent, you can simply see the atmosphere, and you can tell what's going to happen next. Because that's why they say past, present, and future are already known. But if you can go above the material energy, then you can see the future, and you can also reflect on the past. Thank you, Guru well, That's why if you're Krishna conscious, you can transcend all of these, you know, these things. But, Things are auspicious or inauspicious. Prabhupada followed him. You know, just like you want to get married, so you look for that time, which is, you know, auspicious time for marriage. And there's days that are auspicious, and there's days that are inauspicious. If you want to begin a project, there's certain days that are auspicious, and other days are not auspicious. If you dislike, if you begin an event on the dark moon, as opposed to on the full moon, it will have much more, much more success if you begin it on the dark moon. Yamavatsya, Amavasya. Yeah, so all of this is there, I like that. Indulek Hamataji is writing, um, that's the time I travel from work daily, even on Thursdays. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't forget Krishna, that's all. And then yes. we have some, <laughs> we have some more comments coming up. Raj Prabhuji is saying the bodies of creatures there was shiver, as shivering as well as quivering of the left eye and the other parts of the body. These omens announce imminent danger. That's written in Canto 10 omens during um, the Kaliya Lila. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's there throughout the scriptures. You just find it. Especially in Krishna book, you find a lot of, a lot of talk about omens, auspiciousness, and auspiciousness. And Lalita Mataji very nicely um, finished your uh, the sentence that you were uh, Maharaj talking about. She says, "Red sky at night, sailors delight. delight. Red sky the in the morning, warnings. sailors sailor's take war warning." Sailors warning, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. um, Devananda Pandit Prabhuji, uh, would you like to go ahead with your questions? I would like to tell Maharaj Devananda Prabhuji is joining us from Ukraine. Thank you. The question is, according to my feelings, time has a different speed, depending on what Mukhurta uh, it is on now, or on the place where I am now. Is it just my feeling, or 
is it really true? Thank you. Uh, what's going faster or slower? I forgot the object you're talking about. Not, uh, time has a uh, different speed. In the morning, uh, day, in the evening, at night. Is it just my feelings or is it true? It's your consciousness. My consciousness. C consciousness is relevant to time. If you're happy, time goes fast. If you're sad, time goes slow. If, if you're suffering, time goes very slow. And if you're waiting, time stops. And what about depending on which muhurta it is now? Hmm? Um, only my feelings, not muhurta or place where I am now. No, it's it's your consciousness. Consciousness is perception. So some people perceive it one way, some people perceive it another way because of the difference in consciousness. That's all. Everything is based on consciousness. When you're Krishna conscious, you see Krishna everywhere. But other people are also conscious, but they're not Krishna conscious. They don't see Krishna anywhere. <laughs> and, and the time okay. is, is, is constant, yes? Yeah, everything is based on consciousness. And the time Krishna, is constant. If, if you're Krishna conscious, you're happy. If you're Maya conscious, you're struggling. Thank you. Life is consciousness, that's all. <laughs> hey, Mataji, would, would you like to unmute yourself and go ahead with your question? Yes, thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, I think you said that um, these omens are and such... You, you can transcend them if you are Krishna conscious. So I think I didn't catch why then Srila Prabhupada paid so much attention in his own life. He set an example for all of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was thinking like that, actually. He was setting, he was teaching. <laughs> yeah, so he acted, he acted like a conditioned soul many times. One time he was saying, I'm just simply praying to Krishna that I don't fall into Maya. Mm -hmm. So is it that to the extent that you approach this material energy for your personal happiness is the extent to which you need to um, pay attention to these omens? Mm. Well, you won't be able to see them so easily. <laughs> um, they come and they go. If you're trying to, if you're approaching material energy for your personal happiness, that way means you have a materialistic consciousness. Materially consciousness means calculating consciousness. And so when you calculate, you're actually creating a certain mindset and you're trying to adjust the material energy according to fix it, to fit into that mindset. And therefore, you, omens are always there. You may recognize them or you may not recognize them. Uh, but when you're in Krishna consciousness, you're aware of, the, of, how, of how things are moving and you're somewhat careful not to play with the material energy. You know, like they, they made my ticket for a codicy. This was just recently. It was actually the, the 29th, the 28th or, uh, of March. And I didn't know it. And it was too late for me to change it. So I went. And, and then I, I knew. I just knew things were going, not going to go right. And about five or six things went wrong that in my travels from one place to another. So many things were wrong, <laughs> one thing after another. And, but I was expecting it, and I chanted, tried to chant the whole time. But still, even though I chanted the whole time, 
it didn't mean that these things were still not going wrong. It's when I took shelter of Krishna's name, I was able to somehow or other not be affected by it so much. I was kind of laughing to see how what was happening. <laughs> and I was just remembering that this is this is what you get <laughs> for not planning properly. Okay, so then therefore transcending means it doesn't mean that you um, that these things won't happen to you. It means that you yeah, won't you're be not affected. affected. Right. Uh, exactly. Uh, That's a hundred percent correct. Okay, Maharaj, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, because that's a very important point. That's true about everything. It's for Krishna conscious. The world will go on, but um, we might we won't be affected by what happens. Any further questions by devotees? Please go ahead. And if there are no questions, no reflections, then we can end the call. Oh, there is uh, Sri Devi Mata. Do you have another question? Uh, yes, please, Lina, if you don't mind. No, uh, no, no, please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, dear Guru Maharaj, would you kindly explain to us that because we are still in these physical bodies and we are affected by the modes and affected by the material energy, do different times in the day and the different, uh, how much light uh, is coming through, does that affect our moods, our temperament, our energy levels? Because they said there's something like seasonal affective disorder where there's less light coming and people get depressed. Or the full uh, moon. Well, it'll, it'll affect the external environment. But if you're Krishna consciousness, it won't affect you. <laughs> it's all based on consciousness. Consciousness means... You're in the modes, you're, you're, you have a consciousness which is in the lower modes, middle modes, higher modes, or transcendental mode. So where is your consciousness at? And then you would see what is the symptoms of these different levels of consciousness? You know, the mode of ignorance, people will, you know, always be complaining about something. In the mode of passion, people are always trying to enjoy something. In the mode of uh, goodness, people are always trying to analyze and give their intelligence about something. And in the mode of Krishna consciousness, Sudhasattva, people are fixed on Krishna and not so much affected by what goes on around. I mean, Prabhupada also made points, just like when he wanted to translate, he had to have complete quiet when he did his translations on the Bhagavatam. Any slight noise, he would indicate that that has to stop. So it's not that a spiritual minded person doesn't deal with the changing of the material energy, but they do it to facilitate their Krishna consciousness and not simply to overcome some material feeling or to fulfill some material desire. It's all about consciousness, Krishna consciousness. <laughs> Just be conscious of Krishna. That's our process to be conscious of Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Any other last minute questions for Maharaj? Yeah, one more last minute <laughs> about <laughs> omens ahead. again. <laughs> about omens again. Um, I think I've heard that I don't remember if it's the left eye or the right eye 
for a man that if if one of those eyes are twitching, then it's bad. And then for a woman, it's the other side. Do you remember that? Yeah, that's true. Do you, you yeah, remember Mr. Sure. It's in the Krishna book, if you just read oh. it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But I'm not sure exactly where. Some of the pastimes. Right side for men, left side for women. Yeah, that's correct. Left side for women. But but you had mentioned in class about the, the left cheek twitching for men, right? Yeah, that, that's also that's also mentioned. Mm. Not in say for men, I just said I was thinking in general, but I didn't get specific. Mm -hmm. That's all. Okay. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. If, if anybody wants, I have a, a whole... Hare Krishna, Maharaj, please uh, accept my humble obeisances. Yes, Maharaj, I would be interested <laughs> in that thing. That you I, I have a whole book on omens. I can send, a, I can send it to somebody. I'll send it to... I can't hear Lalita Tungi speaking. She's... Uh, Alita Tungi is speaking, but nobody can hear. Reach out to you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Unmute. Mataji, we are not able to hear you. Hare Krishna, am I audible now? Yes, yes. Thank you, Mataji. Oh, was I audible before? No. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, Maharaj, uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, uh, glories to your grace and your wonderful association. Uh, Maharaj, regarding Toronto Ratyatra, um, uh, uh, they're going to have the program, but they're not sure whether it will be in the same scale, depending on how much the authorities allow it. But the team said that they will reach out to you soon, Maharaj. Okay, thank, thank you for that. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Hare Krishna, that was very helpful. We are looking forward to serving you here, Maharaj. Thank you. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Maharaj is still here. Please go ahead, devotees, with any questions, reflections. Concerns. Uh, Hare Krishna Mataji. Um, I, I, I mean, I just want to share uh, yes. this, uh, this, all this thing that I'm reading uh, about the sun and all. So our refrigerator, it has to be hooked up to an energy unit. Then it works. But the sun is not hooked up. It is on a wireless unit with Krishna. And so, you know, I mean, uh, we as humans, we create wire, wireless units very small and they are limited. But Krishna is so unlimited. I feel, you know, he's, he's wirelessly giving us energy to the sun. It does not, the model can be different, but he can, he can connect to us in all the ways possible. So uh, for me, how I see, I'm not, um, I was never exposed to any omens and all this knowledge. So I'm, I'm very happy about it. Uh, I can see Krishna uh, a little, uh, his immense energy. And I feel so happy that he's connected to me and he's mine i'm like oh my god he is super 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 human for me um <laughs> and I, I feel very very nice uh so i i mean i know maharaj is uh, maharaj knows everything uh, but i i'm saying i'm sharing this so that it stays with me for longer it should not mm -hmm. go away the next day so that's what the i more, wanted to share um, the more you the Lord, the more you learn about Krishna, the more you realize how wonderful he is. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much for your class, Maharaj, and for your association. It's Krishna is so wonderful, yeah. Yes. Yeah, Prabhupada said the sun has been there for millions of years and is putting out heat and light, and it still doesn't diminish in, in power. Mm -hmm. 
doesn't need recharging either. <laughs> yes, Maharaj. Actually, Maharaj, I, I did um, my master's in remote sensing. And that time um, I started uh, Krishna consciousness. And then I understood that a satellite, we send the satellite in space for years, but it does not stay there for long. It has to be given energy after certain specific time. It has to be, uh, it, will, it, will, it will stop working. But that, uh, that was 15, 17 years back that, you know, then I understood. But the sun is still in the constellation for years, years and years. All the, all the other planets and all are there. And nothing happens to it. The sun will come out on time, set on time. So um, my, my knowledge, whatever I had, uh, I understood how limited it is. And I, I can now see, you know, that Krishna is so unlimited, so unlimited. In the very end of the 10th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna explains, first he refers to what he explained earlier in the chapter about the different powerful entities within a, a, in creation. And he is the essence or he is, he is considered to be non-different from each one. And in the end of it, the very end of the chapter, he says, to Arjuna, what is the use of all this detailed knowledge? With a single fragment of my, fraction of my energy, I support and pervade the entire creation. A simple, a, a simple fraction of his energy, not only this universe, but all the millions of universes are, are, are working according to a tiny fraction of his energy, which is so insignificant compared to him, his ultimate power. That's why Krishna is so powerful. It's, it's unbelievable. It's not, no one can understand. Sits in the hearts of all living beings. He knows what everyone's doing at all times, at all places. He knows what everyone is thinking. Unlimited amounts of them. And these are just small, uh, fragments of his opulences. We can understand the opulences from the material perspective when we get an idea how vast the material energy is. But when you read the Bhagavatam, and you'll see about the spiritual world and how powerful and unlimited that is, how much do we know about the spiritual world? We get a little information. But the spiritual world is three times bigger than the material world. So if you put all the universes together, that's one quarter. It's one quarter of the entire existence, the other three quarters of the spiritual world, which we have practically no knowledge of other than what we read in the, in the scriptures. Yes, Maharaj, I like that. Yes, I have to multiply it by three now. So, and he is still more powerful. <laughs> still great. And but still he remains mine. I, I feel I like the point that you know he's so 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 amazing, but you know, he's still for me and he's still for and I I feel that you know strength then. Thank you, Maharaj, for bringing up that point. Thank you so much. Yeah, he he is so powerful, yet he has a, a very loving and intimate connection with each and every living entity. Maharaj. That's, oh. that's why when it says that uh, people think that God is with them only and nowhere else. When God is with you and you're experiencing that, you feel like it's, he's only with you. <laughs> that's a feeling of ecstasy. That's all that is. But it's a, it's a, a very uh, true and powerful feeling that God is, is he's with me and he's nowhere, he's nowhere else. That's why when the Christians use that phrase that God said, Christ said, I am the only son of God. That was a statement of ecstasy, not a statement of fact. Maharaj, to this point about um the spiritual world being three quarters and the material world being one quarter. I'm wondering how literal that is since the spiritual world is like 
infinite, right? It's and not so, literal. It's just an I just a way to give you a little indication of how big the spiritual world is. That's all. Mm -hmm. You have to take it in only on that level. Yes. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. not. Yeah, because the, the spirit's always expanding anyway. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, okay. I used to say, Krishna and Krishna is getting greater and greater each moment. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. As if, as if he can go into something greater, which is conceivable by us, we can't conceive of what that is. <laughs> so we know the six opulences of the Lord, wealth, fame, strength, beauty, knowledge, and renunciation. And then we say that each one of these are always expanding. But Jiva Goswami says, the absolute truth is inconceivable. Okay. Thank you. I think we'll stop here. And Thank you so much, Maharaj, Thank you very for much. your wonderful Q&A session. Thank you. So we can end the call. Fun check out the pasture.